Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our session and welcome to another Talent LMS webinar. Today, we have a lot to talk about and it's all about customizations. Talent LMS is a versatile, easy to use, fully customizable learning management system. And our goal here is to make Talent LMS yours so that way not only you can present your portal to your learners in a way that matches your brand, but most importantly, today we're going to focus on customizations that really help you make Talent LMS yours so you can help your team. Customizations are not only for the looks of it, definitely this is a big part. But most importantly, customizations have to do with the function and the way that we all work together. So join us today so you can see how we can help you customize Sun and the Lemmers so that way you can make collaborating with your team a breeze. Let's get started and see who we have today. I'm Theo, I'm part of the customer education team and I will be hosting this session alongside my good colleague, Mary. Hi everyone, I'm Mary, I'm the Customer Education Manager, and I'm here today to help you customize your portal with your teams. You will hear from Mary a lot more and she will share lots of tips, but first let's see what we have prepared for this session. Today we will see how you can reflect your brand identity into your training portal. Very important part, right? But also, we will see how you can offer a tailored training experience to your team. And this is exactly what I suggested before. Customizations are also part of working together and creating a portal that everybody feels like home. And finally, we will step it up a notch and we will see advanced customizations that you can do in Talent LMS using code. So, Join us, let's talk about all of those and let's answer your questions. At the end, we have a live Q&A and we will be able to answer as many questions as possible live. So if you want, have a look at the meeting controls right now and locate the Q&A button. You can send us your questions anonymously if you want, but to be very fair, we would love to know your name so we can have a direct conversation with you. Just remember, the webinar is recorded right now, so you will receive the recording once the webinar is over. So tomorrow, make sure that you have a look at your inbox, get the recording, and of course, make sure to share it with anybody who wants to see how to customize Talent LMS and help their team. Let's get started. And what I'm going to do first is share my screen. I know that you will see a view that probably most of you have seen before. So we're talking about the administrator right now. In Talent LMS, we recognize the importance of reflecting your brand identity to your portal. And that is done through settings like the logo, your colors, your tone of voice, your overall aesthetic pretty much. But that is just part of the white labeling to match your branding to your portal. But what we said, customizations are a lot more like that. In fact, today we will see how you can customize your portal so that way your team members have a consistent way of working with you, can recognize why things are done the way they're done, and most importantly, that you have created a formula that not only helps people identify that the portal is part of the organization, but also they can be more productive, they can be more efficient, and they can work in a way that saves everybody time. So, Let's get started. Administrators are the one who can perform the customizations, but it doesn't have to be a lonely job. You can always talk to your team, you can talk to your instructors and together set things up. What I'm gonna start with is a few customizations that can definitely be part of your first to-do list. So let's go as an admin to the account and settings. The easiest customization and something that will definitely set the tone of the account that is your logo in Favicon. And in fact, what I'm going to do is make sure that you can also see my screen, right? And the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to the basic settings in the account settings that we are, click and upload your logo. Your logo will always be visible on the top left of the screen. And then the Favicon. The Favicon is one of the most important details that really make or break the experience because here you can apply a little image which will be visible on the tab on the top. And that can help your team members, your learners, everybody who's working on your account, identify that this is the related tab with your training. You see here, I have another tab open, but I can definitely see here that this favicon is related to Talent LMS and the training. Let's go to the homepage. 
this is the first impression. This is the page that somebody that you invite in your portal will be able to see when they just start by filling in the information to log in or sign up. The home page can be fully customized. So you have banners, you can have text and image, you can have featured courses, so you can promote a little bit courses that people might want to take afterwards. And of course, you can offer more information in points like that. All you have to do is work with the different sections that you see at the end. So for example, if I want to add a banner, click on the banner and then the section will pop up. You can add title, subtitle. You can upload your image and of course, add a call to action button and save. But today we're not gonna talk about it. We have a very dedicated webinar that will help you create a branded image in your Talent LMS account and make a homepage really the place to be. So in the chat right now, you will see this webinar. This is branding and styling your Talent LMS portal. So have a look at the chat and see the link for that. But why we are here then? Because today we're gonna talk about the menu. The menu is part of the customizations that can really help your team. If we go to have a look at it, Let's see how we can create a page which will contain troubleshooting information, frequently asked questions, and pretty much anything that you want people to have access once they are logged in in the account. So we click on Add Menu, and then we get to Add, and what we want is to add a page. The moment you click Add a page, you will see this specific image. You will see the title field, the URL. You can always type it in, but pretty much it will be the same as a title. And the most important setting here is after login. If you tick the box to show after login, people will see the page only after they have been part of your account and they are in the portal. Update or save if you're doing it the first time. And what you will see here is the page coming up on the menu. This is a page that I have created with frequently asked questions and, of course, details about how to contact the person responsible to help. But you see that these are still sections that we are using underneath. So if I want to edit or create a section like that, I choose the text and media one, edit the section. And from there, you will be able to see that you can add the information. And, of course, further down, you can go to media and you will be able to select if that's going to be a video, if that's going to be an image, and further down, go ahead and save. Now, you can see here that there's a lot of things happening, but don't worry, the account I'm working on today is a playground for all of our team members, and we like to experiment sometime. But in your portal, you should be able to click and work with all of the settings as usual. And another thing as well, let's talk about the theme. Again, that is something that you can always find in the previous webinar, but it's very important to understand what we can do with the theme because we will come back to it a little bit later on. So with the themes, we have the option to work with custom themes. And by default, we have a couple of ready-made themes anyways, we can add more. But if you want to create something of your own, first of all, save as new. So let's create the name of the theme. So I'm gonna call it custom and save it. And now you will see that that theme will be visible in the drop down, and that theme will be now in front of you to edit. Let's work on the colors. We have lots of different options here, but I'm going to change the gray color that you see on the box size because we can make it a little bit more branded. And from your marketing team or from the branding team that normally works with um, your organization's elements, you need to take the color hex, as we call it, and paste it in the related field. So now you see that for the box title, I have our very familiar bright orange. Update, so that way you can save those settings. And then if you want to make this theme apply to your account right now, you have to make it an active theme. So once my page comes up once more, you will see that the theme is not yet applied. You need to just go to set it as active and there you have it. And finally, a very important customization and a very drastic one. Let's go to the domain name. The domain name is where people go to actually join your account, the link, the URL, as we call it. So here you can see that our domain name is tlmswebinars.talentlms.com. So the Talent LMS brand is prominent on the link. 
But what if you want to change it? So what if you want to really remove any trace of Talent LMS and have a custom name for your portal? Go to map a custom domain and of course add your custom domain. So if that would be trainingacademy.com, of course you have already purchased the trainingacademy.com domain name and then you bring the IT team in the picture, you bring your systems admin, anybody who will be working with pretty much the systems in uh, your organization, and they will need to adjust the DNS settings and work behind the scenes in the domain provider and uh, with the recommended settings here. Once they do it, map the custom domain, and that will be your new link to join the training. Remember, it doesn't stop here. You can tick the box to send email notifications from that specific domain. And what we mean by that? By default, the notifications that your learners would receive come from no reply at talentlms.com. So even if you remove the domain name and you have a custom one, still talentlms is prominent in the notifications. So here you can tick this box. And of course, you can change no reply to info. I like it more. And then you see here that in the email address, your own domain will be visible. And again, Talent LMS branding will not be present. It comes with settings and you can see them here. So again, that is something that your IT team should be involved. And for them, it's a piece of cake and they work with domains all the time. This is from my side of uh, the story here. And Mary, if you can tell us a little bit more about how we can customize the portal and help team members be more efficient, that'd be great. Absolutely. As you can see, there are a lot of things that you can do from the main side and for your teams to customize your portal. And most of these settings apply to branches as well. So let me share my screen to help you locate these features and also help you customize branches as well. You see that, right? So uh, just as parenthesis here, what we call branches is this feature that will allow us to separate our users into different training environments. Now check your subscription plan to check how many branches you can create in order to start creating different training platforms, but it's all under the same uh, portal. So as an admin, all you have to, uh, to do is to go here to branches and start creating a new branch. As you can see from my screen, I have branches, I've added some descriptions, so everybody in my team will know why we have these branches here, who is it for, or for what team. And um, again, the idea is to separate your people, so if you have customers that you would like to train separately, if you want to train your own employees into their own departments, this is the best solution for that. And let's look at a specific branch. Let's go here. I've created this branch for our uh, vendors. And as you can see, you need to fill a name and that name will be used at the URL. Uh, so users can use that link to log in to their site. And um, you can change the branch name. So the URL will be updated as well. And it always follows your domain name. So it's a subdomain of your main site. And as you heard from Theo, you can customize your site so we can have the branch name following your custom domain. Of course, you can also change your logo in that branch, change the icon if you want to, and change the theme. So we're using a different branding on the main side because maybe it's for internal use, but you want to have a branch for a specific customer and they have their own branding. Uh, we can create a theme. Uh, as Theo showed you before, and then select which team we would like to use for this occasion, for this branch. So you just select that, save, and that's it. Now, I also want to mention that you can customize the home page of the branch. Again, each branch comes with its own URL, so people can land on a different page. And as you can see from my screen, I have a different home page with uh, other sections, different courses that I would like to highlight. And also I have the option to work and add more elements, more sections the, uh, from the here, uh, from the top, from the down side of the site. Um, but we want to show you features that will help mostly your teams and understand how to use a platform. And what we have found very useful is to create a menu with information that will help your teams uh, work in this platform. So of course, there's also this option to edit your menu, add your own items, pages and links, and you can either create it from scratch or you can clone 
a menu of a, a, a specific element from the menu of the main side. So you see here what we have on the main side. And if I want to bring this here, just clone the page. So I will save time. Uh, before I exit this uh, topic branches, I just want to mention that you can also add specific users to the branch, and this can be learners or admins. So we can have specific managers working on that branch and monitoring what's going on there, and courses so they can have a separate training catalog. And uh, you know that uh, white labeling and customizing your portal uh, is not beneficial just for, for your learners, for the people that are receiving the training from you. Everyone in your team will for sure thank you for optimizing the portal to make it uh, very easy for them to work. And uh, the next feature that I want to show you, doesn't matter if you are an admin or instructor, you have access to groups. Group, it's a feature that allows us to add some users to some courses very, very fast with a mass action button. So it's very easy. You create a new group, you give it a name, and my suggestion here is to always add a description. It will make a huge difference for the people working on the platform because have a look at this page. We're going to have all the groups that we have created along with their description. And even if I just started with the company and they've assigned me of the task of organizing the training, I know that there are already some groups here for a reason because I can see the description. It's easier for me to just add one more user to the group, update it and add the users to the courses. It's much more clear. And now uh, let's move to categories. Categories, it's a feature that will help you organize your courses. So into different topics, it helps the learners, of course, locate the right course on the catalog, but it also helps the admins and especially the instructors creating the courses when they create a new course to assign it to the right category. So they don't have to do extra work, create double categories. It's, it would be a mess. So to add a new category, you just need to go here, give it a name and save that. If you want, you can also create a subcategory, give it again a name, select the parent one and then save. And you can create categories perhaps for a specific department. So if you have courses about marketing, create a category for marketing and then assign all the courses there. Or for a specific topic, if you, you're using uh, the platform for compliance training and you have some courses about this, let's add this all under the compliance topic. And perhaps I see this a lot. You can distribute courses um, based on the level of difficulty. You know, there are some courses just for beginners and it would be nice to start from there. So you can create categories as you want. The important thing here is to connect with your team, create the categories the way that suits you. And then it's going to be easy for an instructor to create a course and assign it to the right category. The next feature that I would like to show you, it's perhaps one of my favorites. Uh, it's under account settings and you just need to scroll a bit down and you will find the option to add custom fields either to courses or to users, especially perhaps to users. Because when you add a user right now, what you know is their first name, their last name and their email address. But I've seen this so many times, there is a need to collect more information and you can create your own fields uh, for users, give it a name, and perhaps uh, you want to know um, in which team they belong to. So if they just name who is their leader, and here we can say the leader name, just show me here who is your leader, uh, it's going to be easier to have this information in my platform. And they can type the name of their leader or make it easier for them and give them some options. I'm just going to put my name there and Theo's name. So they have these two options and the user can pick who is the leader. And you can use this anytime. Uh, maybe you are using the platform a lot of time already. There are users there. Don't worry if you start using this now and you make this field mandatory, even existing users will have to fill in their uh, information. Actually, they won't be able to use the platform without filling in the profile because there is this new field on uh, the site. So besides of gathering more information, you can use this uh, data for reporting. You can click on that and we can use this uh, on reports. You will have extra columns with this piece of information. And we can also use this on notifications. I will show you that and certificates. 
So we can publish this information automatically to more uh, parts of the system. Uh, last but not least, uh, custom fields can also be created for a specific branch level. Maybe you want to know uh, the user's leader name, but it doesn't apply to all of the users of the site. Maybe it's just for a specific branch. So you just need to pick the branch that this field should appear. And the users of that branch only will have to also fill in the leader's name. I'm not going to specify anything now. Just add the field. And that's it. You can update the users or you can wait for them to log in and they will have to uh, select who is their leader. And now, since I talked about custom user fields and how this can be used on notifications, let's go to notifications. Notifications is a great way to automatically send emails to your users for specific actions that are happening in the system. Um, you can see, let's add a notification. Uh, for example, you can create notifications uh, when a user is uh, uh, registered to the platform, they can get an email when they're assigned to a course. Uh, but let me show you an example what happens when a user completes a course. Um, I want to create this notification uh, on course completion. I'm just typing the right keyword course, and this is it. And then we can select the recipient. I know that most of um, the trainers would like to notify the learner that they have successfully completed the courses and just encourage them to have more training. But this particular event, I believe it's very uh, beneficial for the instructors and the branch administrators. So they won't have to log in into the portal very often to check the reports and check the progress of the users. They can just get an email and they will stay in the loop. So I can select in this case uh, that I want course instructors to be notified uh, for when a learner completes a course. And now we can type our message. Now, the first line is always the subject of your notification. So you can say something like new course uh, completion from, and it would be nice to start using the smart tags below. As you can see, there are um, smart tags so that will allow us to automatically populate information. So, for example, if I just click now on the site name here, we will show on the notification your site name. And then we can type the rest of the message. So, I'm just going to quickly copy paste to show you what kind of message you can have here. So, something like, hey, and let's make it more personal. Let's be friendly. I I'm going to send this to the instructor. So, I'm going to need the instructor's name here. So, hey, Theo, uh, a user from uh, this team, so I will put the leader's name, you see, the custom field we have created before, has completed the course, again, use the smart tag, at, and that's it. I think I have all the information that I need. This will be sent out to the course instructors when a learner completes a course. And then all you have to do is to give it a name. And don't worry, this name is just for you, the admins of the site. So when you save the notification, click on create, you will find the notification on the list with the rest. So you have a list. It's more organized this way with the notifications that you have created and the name that you have given. You can see when it's going to be triggered and who is going to receive this. Again, um, it's very useful to organize this in that way so anyone can work on notifications. Maybe we don't need a notification anymore. It's going to be much easier to locate the notification that I want to disable and just deactivate. I can edit to deactivate or even delete or change the text and update it. It's going to save you time from trying to search in the entire system where this comes from. It's right there. You see it on the screen. And uh, last but not least, uh, we showed you the possibilities of the platform, what you can change, how you can do this uh, easier for your teams, the people that are working on the platform to deliver awesome training to your users. So we are customizing these parts that will allow you to uh, work easier in Tantle MS. Uh, but maybe you don't need all of this, and it's okay. <laughs> uh, maybe you have some people that should access more things and restrict some admins to only access a few things on the screen. Don't worry, you can create custom user types. So here it is. Uh, by default, if you don't touch this, the super admins and 
the admins will have access to all the features on the screen, uh, but maybe you want administrators or even branch administrators, we see that a lot, people that are managing a specific branch, to only access perhaps users and courses, but not have access to groups or reports. These are permissions that we can remove from the user type. The user type is assigned to a specific user. So let's see this. Let's add a user type. We can name it here, for example, branch administrator, and give them just the permissions that they should access. Uh, just users and courses, so they won't have access to groups or to reports when they're working on a branch. And you are also safe in a sense that they won't be able to access something they're not supposed to, but they are also happy because they just have on the screen what they need to do their job perfect. And now we're going to the last part of the agenda. I'm going to leave Theo talk about this customization. Yes, thank you, Mary. And thank you for showing us how many ways we can actually customize the portal in a way that doesn't just benefit the learners, but also benefits the way that we work together as a team. And talking about collaboration and customizations that really help everybody, let me show you something that has to do with working with instructors and working with certificates. I'm going to share my screen one more time. And although I just said instructors in there, you still see that I'm on the admin dashboard, right? That's right, because the admins are the ones that push the buttons, but also it's a good idea to consult with instructors, especially when you work on certificates that people will get when they complete courses. So let's work on that. I'm going to go to the account settings, and especially I'm going to click on certificates. Certificates are given to users when they complete a course, of course, when they are successful in a course. And you have the option to attach different certificate templates in different courses. This is something that admins and instructors can do, but admins are the ones who will create the certificate templates. What you might see here is a system that maybe seems familiar, right? We create templates and we customize them, just like themes. So here we have a couple of pre-made ones, and you see that there is already a new customized certificate. But I'm going to create something new with you right now. We can always save as new, give it a name. So I'm going to call this custom certificates, right? And then just save it. What you can always do now is upload your own image. And you can upload your own main image, which has your branding colors, your logo. Some people might want to have other elements like a signature from stakeholders or anything that would really include the branding and the identity of the organization and all of the important parts of your design. So here I have an image. You can drag and drop and you can upload your image. So I'm going to select this one. And of course, I can always update my certificate or even just preview. Let's preview to see what the image would look like with the default template that comes with the text. So you can customize the image of the templates and leave the, the text as it is, or you can customize the image and customize the text as well. So let's see now how the image would look. And it will get there in a moment. Again, I remind you that this is an account that our team and other teams are working as we speak. So we might have to just give it a few moments. But you will see that the preview really gives the tone of the certificate. And you will recognize once this comes up on screen that the branding is really prominent and very important because the learners will receive certificates for the training that's really identified that the training was provided from your organization. It will get there, but let's do something different before we even get a preview. So I'm going to close this window right now and jump into the template part right now. So here on the template, we can customize what the text will be. So you see that this is HTML. If you are familiar with the HTML as code, you can definitely go ahead and work on this as well. But really, we have to work on what is in black color. What is in black color is a text that will be visible on the certificate itself. But certificate might not be the right word. Let's call it awards. So in this case, I'm going to go to the certificate, complete delete the word, and just type a word. And then I can say the certification is awarded or this document, achievements, anything that you would like to change at work as well. But what Mary showed you before, in notifications especially, and even before, we're talking about custom fields, remember? 
custom fields can be used in notifications, certifications, reports, and of course, the user profiles. What you worked with before were the smart tags. Remember when Mary was creating the notification, she used the smart tags that you can use below. But I'm going to use a custom field here and make this certificate template even more personalized for the users. So the certification is awarded to, we have the smart tags of the first name and the last name of the user. And I'm going to say where this person is located. So I'm going to say in, and then again, give a space and click on the location custom field. So you see now the custom fields alongside the rest of the smart tags can be used in the template so that way you can really personalize it more. I'm going to update because I'm very confident that the preview will not disappoint. So I'm going to update the template right now. And of course, you have the option to actually go in the core settings and use that certificate. You know, let's click preview again. I'm just going to give it a try because I know that this time we will be able to see it right on the spot. So you see the very branded background, which indicates our branding identity, and then all of the custom copy that we have added with the smart tags and the change of word that we chose. I'm sure you can really make nice certificate templates and the instructor's role here is very important because since they're going to be the ones who deliver the course, why not give inputs in the way that you make the certificates? But what I promised before is that we're going to talk a little bit more about the themes. So let's go back to the themes and let's see how we can customize the branch theme. Remember, Mary before went into a branch, and you might have seen that this branch was completely different, right? Nothing reminded you of Talent LMS. It was black and yellow and gray, so it was another world, pretty much. To customize the theme of the branding, you have to create a custom theme. So, as we showed before, save as new, give it a name, play with the colors. And here you will see now the vendor branch. Remember the name? The vendor branch is the one that's was applied in that branch before. And even the moment that I choose it, you see everything changes. Now, what are we gonna do? We are gonna write code. I'm just joking. I don't know how to write code, but I really know how to copy paste. We have put together here a customization guide. The customization guide is a cheat sheet, if you want, with lots of suggestions and snippets of code that you can work with in Talent LMS. You can work with CSS and you can work with JavaScript. So we're gonna share in the chat right now the link that you can find this uh, PDF guide and download it from there. And as you see here, it is really advanced. It has a lot of different options that we can customize. We have 25 of suggested customizations here. And what you can always do is go ahead and see, for example, how the customizations are. So you have, for example, a homepage customization. It is indicated on the title what it does. You have the code snippet and where it's suitable, you can see images of before and after or just the customizations. But what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go back to the content. And if I make it a little bit larger so we can read together, I'm going to work on this specific customization, replace the group image using JavaScript. So. If you remember in the uh, reports, in the group reports as administrator, you can see that when you open up a group report on the top left, there is an image with a very typical Talent LMS smile. This is prominent in all of the group reports. But think about that. You have a client who is taking training in a dedicated branch from them. for them. You have customized the branch, you have provided all of the available customizations, logo, theme, domain name. You have completely erased the Talent LMS brand from that specific branch and customer's training. So you don't want the group report to give it away if we say and have the Talent LMS uh, image there, right? So what we're gonna do is use code, apply it to the branch theme so that way when the branch admins your clients are going to go into the group reports of that specific branch they will be able to see their own logo on the report and nothing will be reminiscent from talent lms so let's do it together it's customization number 25 so i'm gonna scroll very quickly down and get closer to number 25. so it is javascript so let's copy all of the code right here and then if we get to the portal, we are in the theme 
of that specific branch, remember the vendor branch, and the customization is JavaScript. So CSS, no, JavaScript, this is where we are. I'm going to paste the code right now, but we're not done yet. One more little step. What you will see right now is that there is a link here, which is example.com image. Of course, there is no such image, but the logo that you want to upload and use in the customization and therefore in the group reports has to be hosted somewhere. What do you mean by that? There are services, uh, providers, or even your own drive that you can upload an image and from there you can get the link and use it in coded customizations. And this is something that you can always have a look at and work with your team, but once you do it the first time, you will always be able to do it afterwards. So once you upload the logo that is desired, get the link from your provider from uh, the hosted site, replace the example link right here. So I'm going to replace it with the image that I have. You see, this is the one. And before saving, let me just uh, copy that once more because I want to make sure that that code will work. Yep, that's it. Probably I did some mistake before. But the idea is that you paste the code, you paste the link of the hosted image, and then update. So let's see now what happens in the branch. And you will see that again, the changes apply to the vendor branch. To see the change, we have to be in the branch. So I'm going to go to vendor right now there. And yep, you see, just a little parenthesis, Mary made the custom field mandatory before, right? So I'm going to select her as the leader, which actually she is, and then update my custom field. So back to the customization. What we did, we changed the logo of the group report. So we eliminate Talent LMS branding from there and we replace it with the logo of that specific branch. So moment of truth. Let's hit the group reports. And is everybody with me? Yes. So there we have it. Everything worked like a charm. I just copied the code, placed the hosted image link, and there you have it. Normally, you would see the Talent LMS logo here. No more. All of the group reports of that branch have that customer's logo. I hope that helps because that is something that not only will make you take customizations to another level, but also it will give you ideas about what you can customize. So remember again, in the PDF, in the content, you have so many things to try, which I'm pretty sure that will be helpful to your learners, to your instructors, to your admins, to everybody working with the account. And one final thing, have a look at the chat. In the chat now, there is a link, a YouTube link about a video playlist. We are creating a series of videos which are going to showcase the customizations that we have on the cheat sheet, on the PDF. So. Every now and then, every uh, week, every other week, pretty much, you will be able to see a video in that playlist where we explain the before, the after, and we show you how to work with the code of the related customization. It's going to be a fun series, a technical series. But again, remember, I'm not a developer. I use the PDF, and I'm sure that you will be able to use it as well. Lots of questions. I can see that button flashing all the time. So Mary, I'm going to pass it to you to answer some questions. Great. Uh, so first of all, thank you, Irini and Nick in the backstage answering the questions we had so far. Let's see uh, all of them, I hope, live now. Um, so I want to first answer uh, Jake's question, which was about customization and how to change the background uh, image behind the options of the dashboard. Jake, the answer is actually on the file that we sent, and I'm just going to share my screen to show you that, uh, Jake, from what I understand, you want to change all of this, right? Here we can add a background image and you can choose whether you want this to apply only when you log in or before as well. So there is this code uh, available on the, um, on the file that we have served and it's just copy pasting. Of course, the image URL that you'll be using has to be somewhere online. Uh, use uh, that image link, replace it uh, in the right part of the code where it says, uh, again, image link, I believe and just paste it in the themes. If it's a CSS code under the CSS tab, or if it's a JavaScript uh, code, you know, under the JavaScript tab, it's right here next uh, uh, one next to each other. So this is for Jake. 
Uh, Mary's question, uh, do we have to host a domain name after we purchase the domain or do you? So Mary, I understand that you're asking about the domain name here when you want to map your portal to a custom domain, right? Uh, it has to be hosted via you. Uh, the only thing that you have to do in order to map uh, the talent LMS portal to your custom site is to add these uh, CNAME records on your DNS settings. Uh, and that's it. You save it, you're going to have a custom URL, and then you contact the support team. It's right here from the help button right here. Just contact the support team in order to activate the certificate. We want you to be able to use a secured site, and we're going to enable the certificate for you for free. So just contact the support. And you should know that this will cover your main site and any brands that you have created so far. If you create a new branch, just wait up to 24 hours and the certificate will be activated there as well. So don't worry if you create a new branch and you think that um, the site is not secure. Just wait uh, a few hours. Um, then let's see uh, from an anonymous attendee. Uh, I've noticed that the branch limit is 15. Is there a way to upgrade to more branches? So I understand that you are using a specific subscription. Let me go with you and let me show you this. Uh, when you're looking at the subscription page, you will be able to see our plans and there you can also see how many branches you can create. So I say that you are in the premium plan. If you want, you can upgrade to an enterprise plan. You can talk with our team and you can have unlimited branches. So uh, this feature gets unlocked if you upgrade to the entire enterprise plan. I hope it helps. Another question again from an anonymous attendee. Do other branches uh, see the discussion from the main branch? No, I'm, I'm going to answer this right away. No, don't worry. Uh, when you create a discussion and for the ones that are not sure what I'm talking about, as an instructor, you have the option to create a discussion. It looks like a forum where people can talk to each other. You create a topic and they start uh, talking to each other. They can upvote uh, the comments there. And when you create a discussion on the main site, only people that can log into the main site can visit the discussion and comment. If you create a discussion from a branch level, then only the branch users can see the discussion. So don't worry, the discussion, uh, it actually uh, belongs to the site that you have created it, and people from other branches won't be able to see that or comment. And let's see, uh, it, there's a second part uh, in that question, and can they register for courses from the course catalog and join live sessions? Now, uh, there's something different happening with courses. We wanted to make this easy for you and create the course just once because we understand that the training might overlapping. The same course sometimes could appear in two branches at the same time. So uh, all you have to do is to create your course once and add it uh, to the branch. So if there is a live session or um, if it's available in the catalog, this will apply to all the branches. And I'm just heading to the branches to show you that when you are editing a branch, you can go to the courses tab. And here you see all the courses that you have created from the main site. So if you add this course to the branch as well, it's going to appear on the course catalog. And if there is a live session, people can click to register. Uh, and that's it. So you save time. You just use the same course. And all the settings will apply to all the branches. It's actually the same course. Uh, a question from John. Thank you. Do clone courses update with changes if the original course is edited? I mm -hmm. see what you want to do. Or would it need to be cloned again? Uh, John, yes. Uh, you all have the option when you create a course to just click on this magnet button and you will create immediately a copy, but it's going to be an independent copy. It doesn't connect it's not connected with the original so when the original course is updated the changes will not be uh, applied to the cloned version they're separate courses and that's why uh, it's a solution I would say to just um, uh, for that case is that we want to offer this course it's very similar but we want to make some adjustments so you won't have to start all over again what you need John uh, I feel that it would be better. Now, for example, let's say that this course 
uh, we want the, every time we update the original to have another course that will be updated straight away. So I want to use the content from this course, five, five tips, let's remember this name, and I'm going to add a new course. Uh, I'm going to name it John because I'm sharing this example for you, John. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to leave all the rest and go straight to the content because I want to show you this. So go down, down here and link all the units that uh, exist from the uh, course five tips. So link from five tips course. Sorry, maybe I'm, ah, I'm not an instructor for this course. I'm going to choose another course. I can't see courses that I'm not an instructor of. I have to be uh, an instructor on that course. So I'm going to use this one, for example, and bring all the units that I have here, okay? So I'm linking units, and now every time you make a change to the content of the original course, the linked unit that exists in this course will be updated as well. So you just need to link units, create courses and link the units afterwards, okay? Let's see now. Another question from Ralph. I'm using several branches. In one of these branches, I want the users to be able to self-register, okay, limit it uh, up to a certain number of users, okay. Um, I don't want them to be able to register manually up to 100 users and from a specific domain. Okay, those four things to all of them. Yes, let me show you. Let's go as an admin to work with branches. So, at the settings of the branch, when you create the branch, just scroll a little bit down and go to the user section. So first of all, we want users to be able to self-register. Use one of the sign-up methods. So here, select direct sign-up method and choose whether you would like to have some kind of verification method enabled. Um, you know, CAPTCHA or admin approves the registration, it's up to you. But I feel that you need uh, one of these three, so you don't have to do something for these users. So first of all, direct option, and if you want, you can select the verification method. Then. Uh, up to 100 users, yes. For this branch, we can't accept more than 100 users, okay? Add the limit there. And for a specific domain, yes. Restrict the registration from a specific domain, and that's perfect. Uh, if you're working with um, a specific company, usually we all share the same domain name at their email. For example, you can find Mary at talentlms.com. So talentlms.com, it's the domain name. And I only work, uh, want users with talentlms.com to their email to be able to self-register. So you're going to use this setup, okay? Um, so it was actually three. Yeah, limited, 100 users. It's all there. Perfect. Raf, this is for you. Uh, and another question from, let's see. Uh, an anonymous attendee. To customize the emails, the option to send an email from your domain has a sender as no reply at uh, eme. Okay, um, just wonder why the eme is the email. It's just a technical thing. Let me show you, show to the rest also what we are talking about in account of settings when you uh, set up a custom domain. If you want, you can go a uh, step further and also customize the email that was sent uh, notifications from. Right now, the default one is the no reply at talentlemus.com. But if you map a custom domain, and I would just say um, perhaps academy.com, I'm not going to save this anyway, it's not true right now. You click here, send an email. It's just a technical thing, it stands for email if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you cannot remove that. Uh, then you see your domain name and you but you can change um, the first part of the email. So it could be something like info, perhaps. But yeah, it's just a technical thing, don't worry. Um, let's see. Uh, another question from John. One last question from you. No, read more, it's okay. <laughs> can I search for courses by tags and how many tags can a course have? Uh, we don't have a feature uh, that will allow us to tag uh, courses. Uh, what you can do, perhaps, and uh, I have to test this with you actually, it's been a long time since I used that, um, it's the option to create custom course fields. And in account of settings, we show that for users so you can gather more information. 
uh, when an instructor searches courses, we search for uh, course titles, course um, uh, unit titles, and also titles from files. So I just want to test with you. Maybe this workaround can work. We need to create an extra field for courses. Um, I'm just going to name it tag because this is the example that I want to show. Uh, make it mandatory and save. OK, save. I'm going to update just one course. So now every time you create a course and for all the courses that exist on your site, you will have this extra field that you have to fill in. I'm going to just update this course. I'm moving too fast. I know I'm just going to the courses <laughs> so I can show you this tag that we have created. OK, I'm going to say here, um, let's find a word that maybe it's not used very often. I'm going to say hungry because I am hungry and this is the first thing that came to my mind. I'm going to update the course. And let's do this now together from the search pattern. Let's search for hungry. No, so this solution doesn't work, but I will keep a note. John Coy, okay, sorry, I'm going to keep a note uh, because I'm sure this has been requested from other customers and we take your suggestions very seriously. You made this platform look great with your suggestions. And um, if you don't mind, you can also send me an email. Uh, so whenever you want to get an update, I will let you know what's going on. Uh, but um, I think I've seen this before and the development team uh, knows that this uh, is a nice feature and we have to implement this. So uh, John, let's talk. <laughs> and... Let's see a question from uh, Mary. Uh, when a learner enrolls, I notice that they cannot view the home page any longer. That's true. Uh, the home page, it's actually, actually the external page, the uh, page that people see before the login. So after the login, they just go to their uh, dashboard with their courses. That's true, Mary. Is there a way to make the home page available to always be viewed by any learner when they want to? Um, Yes, yes, let's perhaps I would um, use the home page and put this also on the menu. What do you think about this? We can add another page uh, and start using different sections that it's identical. We're just trying to copy again the home page in the menu. So people can actually access this anytime from the top of the screen. They will have a more button, especially if you have a lot of elements on the menu and they will be able to find there again the home page if you want to why not but it's going to be on the menu they have to click on that okay so mary this i hope this helps and can you show us this is a question from carlton can you show us how to add buttons to our custom home page for example a button on the home page that takes a user directly to register for an instructor training session Okay, that's good, but um, I have to check with the tech team, with our uh, uh, tech support team, actually, because I, if I'm not mistaken, for security reasons, uh, we won't be able to add a link from Talent LMS. And what I mean, I understand that you want to add a button somewhere on the home page, and you can add uh, CTA buttons, click to action buttons there. And you want people to go there to a link from a Talent LMS page. But for security reasons, the Talent LMS links expire after 24 hours. So it could be a solution just for 24 hours, and this is not what you want. So uh, I'm sorry, Carlton, if you don't mind, uh, you can contact the support team. Maybe there is an alternative, uh, but for Talent LMS uh, pages and security region, uh, the links expires after a while. So I cannot show you work around right now. Thank you for understanding. And another... one quick more. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Uh, let me, let me. Uh, from uh, Dory, uh, when you link in the course content to a new course, if you link a discussion, will it create a new discussion or will the attendees from each course see past course user posts? Uh, Dory, you are referring that for uh, the feature that I showed before. I'm just going to enter any course, close your eyes, and I will tell you when to open. I will be on that page. 
and you want to um, link an iframe. I'm not sure if you can link an iframe unit. Let's do this uh, together. Not for this course. I'm going to add myself to this course as an instructor. Mm, I'm Mary Lee. Okay, so I can work on this course, okay? I have to be in the course as an instructor so I can work with the content. So what I'm doing right now is to add uh, an iframe unit. And in the iframe unit, I'm just going to put any link because I want to just see if the iframe unit uh, works. So this is the iframe unit. I'm just saying uh, google.com. And that. And I'm bringing pages, and you can do this also for discussions. If you create discussions, uh, you can bring uh, the discussions in your content, and that's really cool because people will stay in the course and find a place where they can talk with each other. So, uh, and we want this to be linked to another course. Let's go to any other course. Any other course, as I said. <laughs> Let's go to this one and add a linked unit from five tips that was just added as an instructor. And that's why I can see that now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be the same discussion. I wanted to just make sure that an iframe unit can be linked. Uh, so, yes, you can do this. And it's going to be the same discussion because it's actually the same link. So uh, the attendees will be able to see also the past responses. Yeah, that's right, Dory. These are really good questions. So thank you, everybody, not only for asking questions, but also for picking our brains. And we explore things together. We brainstorm together. And most importantly, we gather a lot of good feedback from you today. So I saw some feedback about the customization guide. Mary also showed some feedback about you know the courses and the home page and all of those options. So bring it up, uh, send us more feedback. We love to hear your feedback. And if you wanna do it, our email is open. Send us an email at trainingteam.talentlms.com and you can ask us questions, you can ask our advice, you can send us feedback, you can really communicate with us at any given time. So trainingteam.talentlms.com is always the email to reach us directly. And we also have one question for you. Can you please give us your feedback? There is a link in the chat right now, and that is for the survey that we would uh, like you please to complete. It takes less than a minute, and it would really help us shape the webinars the way that you want to receive them. And of course, it would really help us to know what works and what we can always improve further on in the future sessions. Last but not least, we have given you lots of resources today, but hey, one more. Our Talent LMS Academy page, if you want to see, past webinar recordings, if you want to see this webinar recording as well, and future webinars to register, join our website, that is talentlms.com forward slash webinars. And there you will see, again, past webinars and future webinars. I'm gonna give you a spoiler. The next webinar that we have is Ask Us Anything, and that will be a practical gamification example. So that will be a 30 minute session with me where we're gonna talk about an example, a real example of how somebody uses gamification, and then it's gonna be 20 minutes of full Q&A. And then we have another one, training in a virtual classroom for training that can happen live, but can accommodate hybrid teams, remote and on-site. Lots to come this year, so, get to our website, send us your feedback to the survey, and of course, send us an email anytime you need. Thank you, Nick and Irene in the chat. Thank you, Mary, for being here. Thank you very much for joining. Have a great day or night. <laughs> and we wish to, hear, to see you in our upcoming session. So get to the website. Thank you very much. Happy training, everybody.